mushrooms, tomato, garlic. That's it, oil. We took some out for me because I'm going vegan these 10 days. Fraser has some cream fresh and some cheese, so that's where things change. We also have some dried up onions. And pickles! Boom. <laughs> And I also threw those beans in there for protein. Okay, so here we go. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're live with Emily Murray. Hello, Emily. Hi. Okay, she's uh, live in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and we're direct with her from our headquarters here. And uh, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Right on. And uh, so Emily is an avid uh, student and volunteer. How long have you been a vegetarian, Emily? Uh, about three and a half years. Okay. That's incredible. So when will the four-year anniversary come? Um, it's kind of dorky that I know the answer to that, but it's in September because it was actually when I went to study abroad in Oslo that I started. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. And what were some of the like the main reasons you started it? Like what were some of like the inspirations or whatever? Well, at that point in time I was only meeting uh, only eating chicken, turkey and fish. I had cut down uh, the red meat. I hadn't really eaten red meat for a long time before that, but um, I was only eating a few different kinds of meat and then when I got to Oslo, all the friends that I made were vegetarian or didn't eat meat very often. So it oh. actually became like it wasn't yeah, I, well, I was interested in being vegetarian and trying out the different practices, but at the same time, it was mostly just my atmosphere and my environment. Like, if meat wasn't really something I was surrounded by, so I was kind of like, well, mm -hmm. this could be a good opportunity to try reducing my intake, and then I actually ended up completely cutting it out, and I didn't really miss it. So then I was, I, you know, I had done all the research, and I knew about the benefits of being a vegetarian, but then when I cut it out and I had all the support kind of backing me because... People were showing me about cooking in different ways that didn't involve meat. I was like, wow, this is really not hard. And all the research proves that it's like so beneficial. So why the heck not? And then I never looked back. And so what, what are some of your biggest benefits of being a vegetarian? Like what were some of the things you see as being the biggest uh, pros? Well, I mean, if you want to break it down to basic health, I mean, there's the general uh, feeling better. Um, you don't you don't feel as like full or bloated because you're not putting so many heavy toxins and things in your body. You don't. I find that my skin is a lot better, and you don't struggle necessarily with like digestive, you know, issues. So there's like the basic health things like that, but also like it's just a matter of if you're able to keep your energy up, you definitely feel a lot better, and your energy can be like dosed by anything really. Like so long as you're smart with what you're taking. So mm -hmm. it was it was just a matter of a few different things, and then it's. You just, you feel better and you feel healthier, but you feel lighter, almost. Okay, yes. Lighter, okay. And I just had to stop. And that's that's the one thing that I've pretty much tried to cut down is pork. When you don't eat a vegetarian diet, um, some, a lot of the convenience that you'll eat, like so, for example, if you're getting fast food or whatever, if you're running late somewhere and you're hungry, like a lot of the things that you'll grab to go are maybe meat-induced substances. So it's interesting when you can't, you're not necessarily in, involving yourself in that, that you're forcing yourself to be kind of preparing or involving yourself in a different sort of diet. So then you're also then benefiting yourself by getting out of the convenience of the food industry, which is kind of mm -hmm. nice. You can still grab like a veggie sub or whatever, and like that's not always the best thing for you. But, you know, you get away pretty quickly from the whole life that is like the Big Mac or that is the, you know, the hamburger and the french fries or whatever. Like it's, it's, you cut out more than just like the meat. It's like the whole ideology of what meat might actually bring. I see what you mean. So also like just the, the fact that they can typically compare to what you would get when you go grocery shopping, prepare meals, have a decent meal versus the cost of a quick, a quickie on the right. road or like a, even if it's a sandwich at a gas station or something, like you think, oh, That's this right. isn't too bad, it's Irving, you know. And you said about like, uh, like keeping your energy up, like uh, what types of things do you do to keep your energy up compared to when you had meat or like what are the differences and what do you, what do you eat? differently or what do you do differently yeah so um 
when I was eating meat, it seemed like my day was pretty divided to three uh, meals, like three square meals. But since I became vegetarian, I find I'm snacking more, but it's, I'm like either eating smaller meals, but I'm like healthy snacking throughout the course of the day. So for example, I might have like, you know, whatever for breakfast, but then for lunch, I might have a salad. And then an hour or two later, I'll like have a couple of like nuts because nuts are really good for you or like an apple or like lots of fruit and lots of veggies. So I find that if I have something, like I'll generally have something smaller so that I keep up that like light feeling and I don't feel full. And then that way I'm like kind of picking away from other things through the course of the day. Lots of bananas, lots of, um, yeah, like beans, like a lot of beans for dinner, like lima beans. Um, I'm right now actually having corn, uh, chickpeas, oh, okay. um, lots of stuff like that. And then I find like keeping my energy up is definitely <clears throat> given the fact that I snack a lot during the day, but it's also depending on what you eat for dinner and stuff too, like that's really good. Like you can eat things that are full of fiber, like broccoli and kale or spinach, or you can have things that are, you know, made full of other things like calcium. It's really, you when you develop the diet, it's a lot easier than you think it's gonna be to find the vitamins and the proteins that you need in order to kind of sustain your health. It's just a matter of being smart with what you're gonna cook on certain days versus others, because there are cheat days for sure, but yeah, it's kind of fun actually. Wow. Now, it's interesting, the light feeling, because I know a lot of people have talked about have had to split the meals around the day, and some people go by accident to have a huge walloping meal at the end of the day, or um, what's the word for it? When you bo binge, binge at the yeah. end of the day, yeah. because you kind of go through the day, oh, I'm fine, I'm feeling healthy, I have an apple and a coffee, whatever, and then blah, blah, blah. But then you get home at like eight o'clock and then you're just like, oh, look at those pizzas and all that stuff, and you just binge, or mm -hmm. even if it's mm -hmm. kind of healthy stuff. So I guess that's kind of your key yeah. to that well, solution, I mean, I guess, is to have yeah. snacks throughout the day that kind yeah. of keep you not feeling heavy and down, because after these meals we're talking about, you might have a cat nap on the couch, or just fall asleep until 12. Right. Okay. Right. So what are some of the top recipes that you have when you do have a sit-down meal, whatever big meals that uh, you love? Mm, that's a good question. Um, none of them are like signature Emily meals. Like I can't say that I like created any inventions of my own. However, I think it's really easy to like blend ideas together to kind of create something for yourself. So I make a lot of things with a rice base. So I make Gouda bowls, I make fried rice, I'll do like a rice and veggie stir fry, um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I also love pasta, so like I make a really good um, like basil um, tomato pasta, it's yummy and it basically just like puts together, um, it's not a sauce, but it like, anyway, it like totally infuses the pasta with the basil and tomato, super good. Um, nice. And then I'll have tofu on an occasion and I'll mix that into some of the rice bowls that I'll make and I... What else do I make? I make all different things. Um, soup, I'll make a lot of soup and chili, lasagna, stuff like that. Ooh. So that sounds like it's really grainy. Like it sounds like I make a lot of rice and pasta, but in reality, like you're absorbing a lot of veggies and the stuff that you make. So like somebody who eats meat would put like meat in their lasagna and then have like a few veggies. It's the same with chili. Like a lot of people will make meat chili, whereas I put like several types of beans. And then I'll yeah. put in like the tomatoes, obviously, and then a whole bunch of spices and like whatever veggies that I want. So you're really able to replace the meat with like a whole bunch of different veggies that you might not have explored before you kind of reviewed or took on the vegetarian diet, which has been really nice because you're, I find your whole um, like veggie knowledge really expands and you're mm -hmm. trying things all the time. So it, I would say like, but I do, I'm a repeat offender, like I'll make the same thing over again or whatever, like, and sometimes for convenience, convenience I'll make something that's easy just for the sake of it, but yeah, it's a lot of things that allow me to kind of be creative, so like the Buddha bowls, like the chili, like the pasta, stuff like that, so it gives me some sort of base that I can then uh, add whatever I feel like that particular day. Okay, because like I, I suppose you could use the same vegetables, for example, and the same sauce, but then maybe spice up the spices. Like you can have a curry-based meal versus a, a tomato marinara-based meal, which oh, changes okay. the whole ball game of things. Even though it's the same, like insides, the same veggies, the same yeah. pasta or rice or whatever, right? Well, and some of the things that I do, like I'll make like a, a 
things do they like purchase to use? Like if I, for example, like tonight I used corn, but I didn't use the whole can. Mm -hmm. So then tomorrow night when I go to use the rest of my corn, I'll be like, okay, how do I want to use it tonight? So it's like kind of nice if you have things left over all the time that you're like, okay, I'm going to play with this again. Like how am I going to create, be creative in the kitchen to ensure that I'm like creating something that's unique, but also whatever. So it's kind of nice. It's actually, I find it to be overall more affordable too. So that's like yeah. a total benefit. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely easy to indulge in. It's just a matter of finding your niche and how you can best accommodate your needs with what you can do in the kitchen. Okay. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Well, I just have one last question before we go. Sure. But what's one of the reasons that you chose vegetarian versus vegan? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, I guess in the beginning, I felt like vegetarianism would be easier. I was unsure about all the practice, and there's nobody else in my family that's a vegetarian, so I wasn't, I was very aware of the benefits, but I wasn't, it was still kind of nerve-wracking because I had never really practiced it until I moved to Oslo. So, I was a little bit nervous about it. And I haven't moved on to veganism because I am a little bit nervous about my protein levels. I rely quite a bit on eggs. Um, I eat yogurt pretty regularly, um, milk, you know, lots of dairy mm. and byproducts, stuff like that. Um, and technically, I mean, Parmesan cheese is actually not vegetarian, but I still kind of indulge in that on occasion. So it's, there are things that are, like, tough. And eventually, I think I would like to move to a vegan diet, but I, I would need, I really need to figure out the best possible ways to do that for myself. Yeah. Um, so the big move to vegetarianism was, that was really big for the ethical and environmental reasons, for sure. And I feel yeah. like I would treat my footprint, which has been awesome. However, going this next step to veganism would be good, and I think eventually I'll try it. But for now, it was a matter of trying to level myself out with vegetarianism. So the more comfortable I get, I definitely think the more likely I'll be to try it and see how it makes me feel. Yeah, because, I mean, you don't want to just go cold turkey in any situation and just That's cut right. yourself off yeah. and then eventually just snap or whatever or, you know, not have a sustainable plan for yourself that you can manage. Well, that's right. And I mean, I think in my personal opinion, um, you don't necessarily need to be vegan or vegetarian to understand the problems that there are in terms of like environmental and ethical or whatever reason you may indulge in these dietary restrictions. Um, like I purchase my eggs locally at the supermarket. So like that might make me feel like I'm not vegan, but I'm like involving myself in the solution to the problem. So like there's, there's a lot of ways you can kind of go about it that mm -hmm. I think are really accommodating to each individual. But yeah, I mean, certainly I commend that vegans, they're exceptional people and they, they're obviously mm -hmm. trying very hard to ensure that the problems are faced. And I think that's exceptional. Um, but I think that there are, for people who are intimidated by the vegetarian and vegan diets, I think there are plenty of options to be involved in the movement for sure, which is a good thing, and it, they continue to rise, which is exactly yeah. what I'm looking for anyway, so yeah. it's good. Like, for example, like you said, you, you're locally sourced, and maybe wild-caught things versus, uh, or wild-raised or free-range versus mm -hmm. uh, mass-produced mm -hmm. and just uh, sold globally by MNCs. Yeah, and thing. I mean, that's yeah. a double-edged sword, too, because you're supporting local economy. The economy. ensuring that where your, you know, products you're coming from are yeah. safe and secure, and you know, the animals were treated well, and you know, the environment wasn't overly harmed in the making of your product. That's like a good feeling. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. My protein levels, I rely quite a bit on eggs. Um, I eat yogurt pretty regularly, um, milk, you know, lots of dairy mm. and byproducts, stuff like that. Um, and technically, I mean, Parmesan cheese is actually not vegetarian, but I still kind of indulge in that on occasion. So it's, there are things that are like tough, and eventually, I think I would like to move to a vegan diet, but I, I would need, I really need to figure out the best possible ways to do that for myself. Wait. Oh, oh, hold on one second, real quick, Emily. Why isn't Parmesan vegetarian? It's made out of cow um, stomach siding. Well, shit. St stuffing siding? So the, so stomach cleaning. Like, okay, yeah. So, like, the lining in a cow's stomach, they chop that up, and that's what they use to make Parmesan cheese. Okay. And nobody really knows that, so they don't necessarily <laughs> consider it to be, like, they just consider it to be a dairy product, but in reality, like, somebody could argue that it's made out of meat. Like, they, they wrap the cheese in the lining for flavor and then uh, I age it? I don't know the actual process, but okay. I know that, like, one of the ingredients of Parmesan cheese is, like, the stomach lining of a cow. Oh, my god. Probably get some kind of substitute. Wow. Yeah. Parmesan so, is definitely vegetarian. Yeah. Okay.
Hey, but cool. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, man, thank you so much, Emily. I appreciate your time today. Uh, she was one of the first people that kind of inspired us to go on this quest last year when we, when we were going through the whole thing. Uh, thank you so much, and we'll see you in April. Thank you. That sounds amazing. We'll keep in touch. Okay, sounds good. Talk to you soon.